Shalom. Sunday night, the world, uh, Christian world is celebrating the resurrection of Yeshua out of the grave right now sitting at the right hand of God. We are here still locked up. The closure gets tighter and tighter and uh, more uh, strenuous than yesterday. People are forced to wear masks today and gloves and uh, can't go very far outside the house unless they have some uh, shopping to do, things like that. But I'm concerned for a lot of my Christian brothers and sisters because I see that they're, they're, they're doing things that are really not helpful and I think they're not uh, proper. What should be our reaction to these very difficult, very challenging, very uh, demanding times where almost the whole world is suffering from a very, very infectious, very, very sophisticated and difficult to deal with virus called Corona. What concerns me is that people are, uh, and pastors and leaders are, are, are doing things that we have no example, no command, no instructions to do such a things in the Bible. They are binding demons of the corona. They're praying against Satan and the corona. They're praying against, uh, uh, you know, f dark forces. And uh, I don't see such examples. What I see is that when difficult times come, the Torah of Moses and the prophets of Israel and the Psalms have a totally different reaction. The, the biblical worldview is that nothing happens in this world, God's world. He is the owner and the sovereign of this world. Nothing happens here without his cause and his effect and his permission at least. Uh, but let me read to you a text from Amos that I like very much. Amos chapter 3 verse 5. Will a bird fall into a snare on the earth where there is no for it? Will a snare spring up from the earth if it has caught nothing at all? This text in the context of Amos actually implies that everything that happens here, there's another text that says that if a tree falls in the forest and nobody heard it, who made it happen? God is in control of his world. This is God's world. He has not abdicated his position he has not passed on the authority of this world to Satan, to the devil, or to the demons. It's his world, and he is in control of it. And if anything happens here in this world, before we blame everybody else, including dark forces, we should look at ourselves. We should have the reaction uh, uh, that Leviticus uh, chapter 26 verse 40 instructs Israel to have. But if God is talking to Israel, but if they confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their unfaithfulness in which they were unfaithful to me and that they also have walked contrary to me. The next text says, 
I will forgive them. I will forgive them. I will accept their confession. I will accept their repentance. Uh, God has the power over viruses and animals and plagues. We know right now we're in, in, in Passover. We remember the plagues that God struck Egypt with. We remember it. And just a few nights ago in the Seder night, we dipped our finger in the wine glass ten times and said, Pardea, Kinim, Arov, Dever, all the ten plagues and dripping a drop of wine into the cup for each one of the ten plagues that God struck Egypt. This was not the devil that did it. It was not an angel that did it. He himself did those plagues on Egypt, including the last plague of the death of the firstborn of Egypt. He did it because Pharaoh would not budge. Pharaoh would not release Israel. Pharaoh would not obey the word of God that Moses brought him when he said, Let my people go. In the end, he begged Moses to take even the wealth of Egypt with him and to leave Egypt. Of course, he changed his mind. He thought he could win. But that brought the calamity on, on Egypt that the Egyptian army sunk in the waters of the Red Sea. But let me read you uh, Psalm 91 from verse 3 to 6. It's a very long psalm, a very important psalm, quoted a lot of times in the New Testament, uh, parts of it. But let me read you these three verses. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the prelious pestilence. Like the one of the corona. It's a pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers. And under his wings. You shall take refuge. His truth. Shall be your shield. And buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Nor of the arrow. That it flies by day. Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Psalm 91, verse 3 to 6. God can deal with these things. And if you think that somebody, the devil or demons, whoever, did that without God's permission, read Job chapter 1 again. There are other texts as well. You'll find out that the God of Israel is in charge of his universe. And no strong man, demon or devil or Satan, can take his reign and his control over his creation. There is no strong man or demon or devil that can take the property that God created. Ex nihilo. If they can, they're bigger than God, stronger than God, better than God, but they can't. It's his world, and to the very end of it, and for eternity, it's still his world. So, look at Jeremiah, Jeremiah 31, verse 28. And it shall come to pass that as I have watched over them, to pluck up, to break down, to throw down, to destroy, and to afflict. So I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. This brings us from chapter 31 of Jeremiah to the first verses of chapter 1 of Jeremiah, in which he describes Jeremiah's job as, as destroying and plucking and, and, and uh, cleaning up the house of Israel. 
But here in chapter 31, just two verses before he promises the new covenant, God says, as I have done these things through you, Jeremiah, I will do the second part. I will build. And we are in a phase now where God is building Israel. He's not destroying Israel. God is building Israel. And like never before, even the United States, the great United States, and the President of the United States is giving Israel the permission, just like Cyrus, the king of Persia, gave Ezra and Nehemiah the permission and the money to come back to the land of Israel after the 70 years of exile and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. The same thing is happening now. We have a new Cyrus sitting in Washington. We couldn't have dreamt that we would get permission from the White House of the United States of America to uh, annex the big blocks of, 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 of uh, building and settlement in the Judea and Samaria and in the Jordan Valley and in the Golan. These are days of, of, of greatness. And yes, we're struck with the corona United States is struck with the corona in a terrible way, but our reaction should be repentance. Begging God for his mercy, recommitment, recommitment of our lives and our faith and our, our, our everything to do the will of God. That's what our reaction should be. That's the reaction of a people that know God. And fear God. And don't fear. Idolaters. And idols. And demons. We've been given power over these things. Not fear. And we have no right to talk to them. Or to bind them. Or to do anything with them. Leave them alone. God is in charge of your life. The life of the nation. Look at what Daniel says. Daniel chapter 9, verses 13 through 15. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this, 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 should be all this distress has come upon us, yet we have not made our prayer before the Lord our God that we might turn from our iniquities and understand your truth. Therefore, Lord, therefore the Lord has kept the disaster in, in mind and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, which he has does, though we have not obeyed his voice. And now, O Lord our God, who brought, you, who brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and made yourself a name, and it is this day we have sinned, we have done wickedly. Daniel prays a prayer of repentance. Psalms 145, coordinated with Daniel's statement. And with this I will end. Psalm 145, verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He also will hear their cry and save them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. There are many more texts, but Daniel and Psalms 145, verse 17, chime together. What do they say? That the Lord is righteous in all his ways. You know, if you separate one act that the Lord has done, or one command of the Lord, it may look terrible. Like what he told Joshua and the children of Israel when they crossed the Jordan River. He said, kill the, 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 the Canaanite nations. Don't make 
bonds with them don't make contracts with them yeah kill them wipe the land because they they you know they were doing terrible things the Canaanite idolatry of of the Hittites and the Prezites and the Gergesites and the Jebusites and the Hivites and the Amorites were terrible seven nations that were terrible i mean human sacrifices was nothing compared to what they did around the human sacrifices horrible things so folks our reaction should be first of all gratitude to god that he is our god second of all introspection to look into ourselves and i'm st- talking especially to the leaders the leaders ought to read ezekiel chapter 34 what god says to the shepherds of israel and i think that so much of what i've seen on 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 christian television and and around the globe in in good big powerful churches has to be reviewed our act it has to be reviewed and it has to be re recalibrated to where our life our blessings the great blessings that god is blessing uh, the, the christian communities around the world material blessings and spiritual blessings they need to be recalibrated and refocused in doing god's will and making god's kingdom a success and a and, and a prosperity and then worry about the local and the 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 showing of of prosperity and wealth in the local scene not forget that that we are as disciples of yeshua called to bring the good news to the world not only the good things for ourselves it's not wrong but it has to be within measure so dear brothers and sisters you know don't pray against evil pray for good don't pray against the devil leave him alone pray for god to deliver us to bless us uh, ourselves and say what do we need to do in order to bring the grace of god for ourselves for our communities for our countries for our neighborhoods so that people will know these are the disciples of yeshua and in israel and judaism now that is so important so important because the jewish nation and the rabbis are changing and are beginning to look at yeshua in a different light and it's time for us to bring that to into reality because if we don't bring it somebody else will god's word will be fulfilled all israel will be saved if you're not a part of it and you don't participate and you don't pray and you don't uh, give and you don't you know bless and pray for jerusalem somebody else will you will miss and somebody else will gain so let us all concentrate asking god for his goodness and his mercy and his righteousness to be revealed in this earth recommitting ourselves reorganizing our lives to serve him better than we did in the past and the coronavirus will go away just as it came and the world is going to change for the better if we the disciples of yeshua in this world will intercede repent confess and bring the mercy of god to be poured on this earth with blessings in yeshua's name i bless all of you shalom dear brothers and sisters i see a lot of people from all around the world from south america from the negev desert from north america from asia from uh, brazil from all over here god bless all of you and protect you from coronavirus and give you a good heart to bless the lord for all of his goodness and mercy and confess his righteousness in all that he does together if you look at one act that is happening in the world you say god is is not righteous is not right 
But if you look at all the reasons behind what he does and what the results of it will be, you'll say, praise the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who loves the world so much that he gave his only begotten son so that nobody will perish, but everybody will have everlasting life. In Yeshua's name.